I don't think anyone has watched more calisthenics YouTube videos than me, seriously. So today I'm going to take everything that I've learned, both through YouTube and from experience, and dumb it down to the essential things that you need to know in order to properly start. By the end, you will have a global understanding of what the process of starting your calisthenics journey should look like. Tell the little bitch if you keep talking, we can get busy. Get rich and die trying to life beady. Ball like trouble, dumb bomb, too shifty. So the first step that you need to go through as you start calisthenics is the most neglected step, probably because it's the most boring step. Calisthenics exercises all have certain flexibility requirements, and if you do not meet these standards, you are likely to get injured. Firstly, you must be able to extend your wrist to at least 90 degrees without any pain or discomfort. This is essential for basic things such as push-ups, but will also be important once you move on to more complex elements like hand balancing. And 90 degrees is really the minimum. Ideally, you will want to go past that as you get more advanced. The other joint range of motion that you need to make sure you possess is 180 degrees of shoulder flexion. This is not only important for handstands, but also any other exercise where you hang from a bar, such as pull-ups and muscle-ups. Now obviously you would benefit from being flexible at all of your joints, not only the wrists and shoulders. But when starting off, I think those two should be your first priority. With that out of the way, we can move on to some less boring stuff. There are foundational exercises that everyone starting calisthenics must master before learning the more cool looking skills. These include horizontal pushing with push-ups, vertical pushing with dips as well as with pike push-ups, horizontal pulling with Australian pull-ups, and vertical pulling with regular pull-ups. We also have two types of core exercises that you should work on. Dynamic core exercises like the hanging leg raise, which involves movement, and isometric exercises like the plank and the boat hold. When it comes to training legs with calisthenics, there is a lot of controversy around the subject. A lot of athletes limit themselves to pistol squats, some swear by plyometrics like jumping squats and jumping lunges, and others skip legs entirely. I'll make a separate video analyzing all the different options and breaking down what I think is the best, so subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. But for now, as a beginner, just start off with some bodyweight squats and some glute bridges. So now that you know what the calisthenics basics consist of, you can determine what kind of beginner you are. Are you an athletic beginner who can already do all of the basics? Or are you a true beginner who still struggles with them? Maybe you can't do a single pull-up just yet, or a single dip. Depending on what kind of beginner you are, your training goals will be a little bit different. As a true beginner, you'll want to first unlock the basics by working on easier progressions like incline push-ups, negative pull-ups, knee raises, etc. Once you've unlocked the basics, you'll then want to increase your reps and work towards the numbers that I'm putting up on screen here. The athletic beginner should also try to reach these numbers as they will provide a solid foundation of strength for you to move on to the next step. Once you've mastered the basics, a whole new world of options opens up to you. You can start learning skills that you see people doing all over social media. You can choose from dynamic skills, or static skills, or do a bit of both. You can even explore the world of freestyle calisthenics, which is much less popular, but looks awesome. Essentially, mastering the basics allows you to branch out into whichever direction you feel like going. Now that you're good at pull-ups, you can choose to work on explosive pull-ups, high pull-ups, until you are able to do muscle-ups for example. Or you can pick another direction, work on archer pull-ups and other progressions in order to eventually unlock the one-arm pull-up. Now you might be asking yourself, well Luke, you told me to increase my push-up numbers, but you didn't tell me how to do it. Or you told me to increase my wrist flexibility, but you didn't tell me how. Here's the thing, alright? This video would be an hour long if I explained in detail how to achieve every step that I've talked about. Instead, I've outlined everything you need to know, and all that's left for you to do is a quick Google or YouTube search on the specific things that apply to you. For example, I said that you need to have good wrist flexibility. So at home right now, you can assess yourself and see if you need to improve it or not. And if you do, then simply look up how to improve wrist flexibility. This applies with every aspect that I've talked about. I told you that you need to unlock push-ups and then increase your push-up numbers. Let's say you can already do push-ups, but not a lot. You then know that you don't need to look up push-up progressions, and instead, just need to find a tutorial on how to increase your push-up numbers. And I can tell you that there are plenty of tutorials out there already. There's no point in me repeating word for word 
what every tutorial is saying. With that being said, I believe I have covered the essential elements that you need to know for starting calisthenics. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and comment what other type of content you would like me to make. Peace.